Hello friends, now today we are going to see the path and arc of contact for a gear bell. But before going in detail of this path and arc of contact for the gear bell, we will see some standard systems of the gear bell. So initially, that we know that for specifying the gear, so there are some parameters such as addendum, dedendum, then the working layer, tool thickness, fillet radius, and most important parameter is the modulus, as it is the ratio of thick circle diameter to the number of teeth. So depending upon these parameters, there particularly this gear teeth they are classified as follows, such as first is 14 and a half degree composite system, then 41.5 degree full depth involute, then 20 degree full depth involute, then 22.5 degree full depth involute, and 20 degree stub to involute. Out of this five, mostly commonly we are using 20 degree full depth involute. So how this system, how this tooth profile it looks. So first of all, 14.5 degree composite system. So it is mostly a sacral curve at the top and bottom portion, while the inward fold in the middle portion. So here if you see, so how the uh, yeah, this angle is measured, so this angle is measured in such a way, and this is nothing but it is the circular pitch, that has the distance between the consecutive two points. So this addendum and this is the addendum. So 1m is the addendum standard value and addendum is 1.157 m. And this 14.5 degree full depth input system. So this type of profile it is a straight line. Here if you see it is a straight line, except at these ends. So these ends they are having the fillet radius. And uh, particularly this input system we are using because for the cycle, the manufacturing cost is high as compared to the input profile. So we are using input tooth profile, but input tooth profile is having one basic problem that is the for us. So this can be avoided by maintaining the pressure angle and by maintaining the center distance between a gear pair. So now this is a gear pair and in this case now we are going to see the path of contact. Now here if you see, so first this is the wheel which is the gear and this is the pinion which is small wheel. So this is the addendum circle for the gear, this is the pit circle and this is the root circle or the addendum circle for the gear. And this is the addendum circle for the pinion, pit circle as well as root circle or addendum circle of the pinion. And now for this gear pair, if you see when the gear pair is, it is in meeting position, so when the pitch circle of this gear and pinion, they are meeting at one common point, so this point is called as the pitch point. And the tangent which is drawn through this pitch point, it is making an angle theta with this line. This is nothing but the line which is passing through the pitch point and it is normal to the point of contact. This K is the point of contact for a gear pair and at this point L, the point of contact is leaving. So initially when this gear and pinion, they are coming in contact, they are coming in contact at this point K and they will be remaining in contact at this point L. And after above this point L, the contact of this both the gear pair, it loses. Then another bit comes. Here, this capital in the letters indicates the radius for the pitch circle, addendum and addendum, and small letters indicates the radius for the root circle, pitch circle and the addendum circle for the P. Now further we will see in detail. So that triangle or that line diagram is represented here. So here there will be two basic triangles such as O1 or you can see O1 M P and O2 N P. And this red line indicates that at this point, the point of contact means the gear they are coming at, okay, at this point and at this point L they are leaving. And this P is nothing but the pitch point. So what is path of contact? So the length of path of contact is the, uh, particularly the length of the common normal which cuts the addendum circle of the gear as well as pinion. So this line, it basically cuts the addendum circle of this gear and this is the addendum circle for the pinion. So total length of path of contact is from this diagram it is KL, in which the total path of contact is divided into two parts. One is KP. So here if you see the zone, that is the KP, this is the path of approach and P to L, it is the path of recess. Means at this point, the teeth they are coming in contact at point K and at this point L, they are going away from each other. And the path of contact for a gear pair from this diagram, if you see, it is a straight line. The path of contact is obviously a straight line. So this KL is called as the total 
a length of path of contact and it is divided into two part one is kp is nothing but it is the here kp is nothing but path of approach and pl is nothing but path of basis so from the triangle as initially in the previous slide we will see here you will directly get the kp kp is nothing but the path of approach so by knowing the terms by trigonometric function and by using the rules we will get the path of approach formula and from this you will get the path of basis and in then afterwards total length of path of contact is what summation of path of approach here if you see kl as i have told you kl is the total length of path of contact it is nothing but kp path of approach plus path of basis so this is the total formula for the calculation of total length of path of contact now what is arc of contact so here if you see there is r g p h so at this point g your gear is now coming closer and at this point h they are moving away from each other so the total length of arc of contact is gph from this diagram it is gph in which gp is the arc of approach and ph is the arc of basis so in this way we are getting the arc of contact for the approach part and for the basis part and then the total length of total arc of contact is total length of path of contact upon the cos of phi is the pressure angle so contact ratio so contact ratio it is basically a unitless quantity and is the ratio of total length of path of contact to the circular pitch so from this formula you will get directly the contact ratio and it is mostly this contact ratio value it does not exceed 2 it is mostly 2 and below this contact ratio is nothing but what it is just just we are knowing that how the gear teeth they are coming in contact means mostly only single teeth they are coming in contact with respect to each other but if there is double gearing system then more than one teeth can come in contact but not more than two teeth they are going to going to come in contact so your contact ratio value it is up to 2 or below 2 not exceeding the value of 2 so now what is interference so this interference phenomena it is occurring if you see here now there are two addendum circle so here now uh, this circle this is nothing but what this is the maximum addendum circle and this is also what this this is this is particularly the maximum addendum circle for this pinion and this is the maximum addendum circle for the gear now initially when your addendum circle for the gear and for the pinion if it is coming at the root circle now suppose this is the addendum circle actual addendum circle for the pinion and this is the actual addendum circle for the gear so when they are not exceeding inside the base circle so this is the base circle is the addendum circle if they are not entering inside the base circle then there will be no in interference but if there is change in center distance of the gear pair then ultimately here if you see if there is change in center distance then the addendum circle for the pinion and for the gear they will try to enter inside the base circle and this phenomena is nothing but what it is called as the interference phenomena where the addenda of the gear and the pinion they will try to enter inside the base circle of respect to pair so how this addendum means how this interference can be avoided so first of all you have to maintain the center distance here if you see o2 is the center distance for the means center point of the wheel and o1 is the center point of the pinion if you maintain the center distance then ultimately your pitch point will be maintained means the both the pitch circle they will be coming in contact at this point b then afterwards you have to also maintain the pressure angle here you have to maintain the pressure angle then also you have to maintain the uniform velocity for the pinion and the gear so in this way we can avoid the interference now what is undercutting so now if you see here particularly in this diagram now this gear this is the teeth of one gear this is the teeth of another gear now suppose this uh, particularly if you see this is the pinion and this is the gear teeth now this is the base circle base circle is the what it is the tridentum circle or root circle and this is the pitch circle and whatever the circle is passing through the top of the teeth this is the addendum circle now if we know that below the base circle means for there are two types of teeth profile one is involute another one is cycloidal and involute teeth profile it obviously exists above the base circle that is above the tridentum circle 
and psychological truth profile they can exist above the base circle as well as below the base circle now initially here if you see this zone if you concentrate this to this tooth profile in this zone then this zone which is existing below the renal circle base circle or root circle it is the non involute profile and you know that when a involute profile tooth profile is meeting with the non involute then such type of phenomena means it will try to dig the material from the base or from the bottom and such type of material removal from the bottom is nothing but what this phenomena is called as undercutting phenomena and how this undercutting phenomena is avoided this undercutting phenomena is avoided by providing the cyclo tooth profile at the bottom side of the base circle here you have to just change the tooth profile you have to just to make it a cycloidal tooth profile so that when the involute tooth profile comes in contact with cyclo there will be no any removal of matter and the undercutting phenomena can be avoided thank you